Now, Donald Trump says he is here to save the day, but can he? My next guest says yes, and he is here to give us exactly what that plan is. Barry Nisbaum, glad to see you. So good to be with you, Andrea, and great to see you again. Well, thanks. I don't know if you heard that laundry list that I just uh, laid out in terms of Obama's legacy. I think, you know, it's fact-based, unlike um, his farewell speeches that have just gone on and on and on and on and on. Um, but number one, he claims that he's fixed our health care system. I assume you don't agree, right? Oh, my gosh. The uh, ACA is the singular most disastrous single program in American history. It's a fabulous idea, Andrea, which is to um, take the richest country in the world and give uh, a health care safety net to every one of its citizens. So don't get me wrong, it's a noble purpose. But the way it was put together um, from the very beginning was disaster on steroids. Mm -hmm. Go back to Nancy Pelosi standing at the speaker's platform saying, if you want to know what's in it, you have to pass it, and then you can read it. Mm -hmm. Remember all the promises that Obama gave us, like you can keep your health care system, you can keep your doctor, mm -hmm. everything will stay the same. Literally every single promise that was made blew up in smoke, not the least of which is the entire system is going bankrupt nationwide. It could be the biggest crippling financial um, debacle in American um, domestic policy history. And in most states, the exchanges have all closed down and there's maybe one or two choices and those are fading fast. So mm -hmm. bottom line, the ACA, complete, total disaster. Mm -hmm. If you judge his presidency on health care, he gets an F. Yeah, and you know, it, it's so bad that it almost makes you wonder whether or not it actually was a noble pursuit or if it was not destined to fail in the first place and it was a stepping stone to try to get single payer, complete government run health care over on us. You know, President Reagan warned in 64 in a speech that he gave that the inroads to socialism in America would be through the health care system because, you know, who could deny sick people health care? That it was really, that that's really what the end game was. It's not about providing health care to anybody. And as you can see by the result that that didn't happen. You know, we've got 300 million Million Americans right now only 20 million are on Obamacare so and, and of the 20 million a lot about 11 million of those had health care before and lost it because of Obamacare so that leaves 10 million that didn't have insurance before didn't we already have Medicaid to where if you were poor or if you were indigent you could walk into an emergency room and a hospital could not refuse to, to provide health care so this, to me, was always a ruse in order to uh, basically take over one-sixth of our economy and get socialism over on America. You know, um, if you look at his background and you read his books, this should not be a surprise to any American. Um, this is a guy that came from a socialist communist background, and the idea was that government knows best for you mm -hmm. uh, in regards to every part of your life, Andrea, in healthcare. As you said, going back to Reagan's uh, prophetic words uh, several decades ago, uh, could not be more true today. I'm mm -hmm. dying to see what the uh, GOP slash Trump uh, replacement is, and uh, we will know within the next couple of days. But, you know, the ACA is not the biggest failure of the Obama presidency. I think, without a question, as I have been screaming about for several years, the Iran nuclear deal mm. uh, is the single biggest failure in American foreign policy history, mm -hmm. and I include Pearl Harbor in that. Mm -hmm. um, we literally have entitled the world's leading sponsor in terrorism to pursue nuclear weapons at a frenetic pace, and we gave them the money to do it, and we mm. negotiated the deal with the same genius that walked out of the North Korean nuclear talk saying, North Korea will never have nuclear weapons, which was the biggest lie of the Clinton administration. And what did we do? We hired that same person to go bring us Iran's entitlement to nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. And as he leaves office, uh, Obama has that as his legacy. Mm -hmm. And let's see what Trump does with the Iran nuclear deal. The JCPOA, as he said during the entire campaign, is the worst thing ever to happen to American foreign mm -hmm. policy. And I hope to God he sticks to his guns. Well, you know, I, I look at that Iran, the Iran nuclear deal as part of an overall uh, failure in terms of foreign policy. And I have to, to think that it was orchestrated and it was by design. I mean, you look at what happened in Egypt and Libya and how um, there was no reason why we allowed and actually helped take out 
people like Muammar Gaddafi, they posed no threat to America at that point. In fact, Gaddafi gave up his weapons after September 11th. So, you know, o Obama's foreign policy has emboldened, he has literally given money, to, and, and not just in Iran, but what we have now is we have a Middle East that has been funded by Obama with taking out allies or people that were at least friendly to were running secular governments and friendly to Christians and even protected Christians. We put radical Islam in power. You look at what he's done in Syria. You look how he took out and destabilized Iraq on top of the Iran deal. And you have to question, why would an American president be involved to that degree financially and otherwise in destabilizing that area and allowing radical Islam to take power? Yeah, look at, look at the history of what you just talked about. The uh, 2008 um, apology world tour by then brand new President Barack Obama started in the Middle East with him bowing for the first time to a foreign leader. And at the time, shortly thereafter, as you point out, Andrea, he was uh, endorsing the Islamic Brotherhood to lead Egypt. Mm -hmm. He was endorsing the removal of uh, some sort of stability uh, in Libya, both of which were replaced by Islamic fundamentalists. Mm -hmm. And then he went to Syria, put his line in the sand, which was a beautiful thing to say, which mm -hmm. is if you gas and annihilate your own people and create a chemical weapons uh, mass murder, the United States of America won't stand for it. And what did he do? He literally ran away. I hold Barack Obama singularly culpable for the rise of ISIS. Mm -hmm. We ran away from Iraq and left a massive void there. We literally told the Syrian mass murderer, um, Bashar al-Assad, you can do whatever you want to your own people. And what happened? ISIS filled the void mm -hmm. and tens of hundreds of thousands of people are streaming out of Syria mm -hmm. as a result. Many of whom, by the way, hold fundamentalist Islamic terroristic uh, um, relationships, if not loyalties. Mm -hmm. I hold Barack Obama absolutely the cause of that. Look, yes. Syrian ambassador, uh, our ambassador to Syria, quit because mm -hmm. Barack Obama ran away from Syria. His foreign policy is a disaster. It's a disaster in China. It's a disaster in the Ukraine, in Crimea, in Libya, in yeah. Egypt, in Syria. Everywhere right. he went. Literally, we became a weaker nation. Thanks for being here, Barry. Appreciate it. More America Trends coming right back up.